Now, as we start to understand these energies, we have to understand, well, what's the use of knowing all this energy about the star? What can I get from the wavelengths and energy coming from a star that's purposeful to me thinking about astronomy? So we call this section here spectral analysis. And spectral or spectrum is the data that we get from the star um, energy and wavelength in kind of a visual form. Okay, so what we're seeing from these stars here is, of course, stars are made up of different gases, and all the different gases that those stars are made up of actually give off its unique set of spectral data. Okay, each gas is a little bit different in terms of the wavelengths of energy it gives off. Just like when we think about chemistry, each element and each atom had its own setup in terms of where the items were, or how many items there were in the nucleus and the energy levels. Same kind of idea here. So each gas or each element within a star gives off specific spectral lines. And what I can use those spectral lines for is to figure out the element composition within different stars. Because we, of course, are very close to our sun. Okay, but the sun is still millions of miles away. And we know a lot about the sun because of its proximity to Earth, but we have a difficult time traveling to any other star because of their vast dis distance. So the spectral analysis we can actually do from Earth using a telescope and figure out all this information from stars that are extremely, extremely distant. So what you did in your lab, or will be doing in your lab, is kind of looking at the fingerprint of all these different elements. We viewed the spectrum of a different element where we saw the wavelengths of energy coming from that star, and we call that the stars or the elements fingerprint because it's really specific to each element or each star depending on its composition. Each element is going to have its own special set of spectral lines. So here's a couple common elements that we can see in stars, if a star would contain neon, I would have to see this exact set of spectral lines to know if that element was included. Okay, sodium has a very simple spectral analysis. The only wavelengths of energy are in this yellow realm. Okay, um, a couple other ones here, mercury, lithium, potassium, these are all possible elements within a star, but notice they're all slightly different. Okay, so that's why we call it its fingerprint, because it's specific to that element. Okay, so we can use the star spectrum, looking at the energy it gives off, to try to figure out, well, what element is present in this star. So for example, here's a star spectrum. Okay, we see the lines here showing where the wavelengths of energy are being emitted from this light. And what I can do then is take some of the common elements found in stars and go to match them up. So here with sodium, the only wavelength sodium is giving off is this location of yellow. So by lining these up, I can say, all right, does this exist in my star? And because both of those lines match up, yes, I know that sodium is going to be present in my star. If I look at mercury here, Okay, if I trace these lines up, oops, okay, mercury, does the mercury fingerprint match to the fingerprint of the star that we're looking at? And if I trace these lines up, I do notice that some of them match, like here I see a few wavelengths matching here, but in terms of this part of mercury, there is no match in this star. So there's no way that mercury would be an element that makes up this star because the wavelengths that mercury gives off do not all show up in this star spectrum. Okay, we can again do the same thing here with lithium. Do what I can, kind of tracing straight. Okay, that one was a match here. There's no match. So I know there is no way that lithium could exist within this star. All right, and I've got a few more down here we might get a little bit cut off. But if we trace these up again, <laughs> kind of straight. All right, now we're looking, does this fingerprint match down here? And what I do see is this is a match. 
So this bottom element here would go with sodium, saying, yep, both of these would then be present in this star. Okay? So composition is one of the main things I use to spectral analysis for to figure out what is a star made of despite its really far distance. The other thing I can use spectral analysis for is for temperature of a star. Okay, temperature of a star can be determined by looking at where most spectral lines fall. Um, just to give you a little range of different temperatures a star could be, um, depending on the color that the star glows is going to directly correlate with the temperature. Um, yes, stars can glow red. Yes, they can go purple. We're typically used to that orangish yellow color of the sun, but depending on how much energy that star is giving off, the temperature can really vary. If the star is glowing red, we know that temperature is going to be around 4,000 degrees Celsius. Violet, on the other hand, having the smallest wavelength is going to give off the most energy and actually have the highest temperature of around 10,000 degrees Celsius. Yellow, being right in the middle of the visible spectrum, will be kind of a mid-range here of 5,000 500 degrees Celsius. So a little bit backwards than what we're used to. Normally you think really red hot stuff, blue and purple kind of cooler, but it's a little backwards when we think about temperature of star. And one thing to kind of bring it back to something you might know about is when you look at a flame. Right? If you light a match, a match head here, right? if you light that match, you're going to notice that right at the edge of the match, it's really bluish white. But as you get further and further away from that match, you're going to kind of notice it's kind of flickering orangish, yellowish up here on top. So the blue, remember, being right at the match head is the hottest. Okay, well, the further out we go from the match is going to be that red or orange a little bit cooler. Okay, still extremely hot in terms of temperature. But overall, the longer the wavelength, the least energy, the coolest the star is going to be. Because the violet is in that really small wavelength range, it's going to have the highest temperature overall. Okay, a couple other things that spectrum can tell us about, not only composition, energy level, and temperature, but I can also compare spectrums from year to year and star to star and actually determine, hey, is the star moving towards or away from the observer? or specifically from Earth or telescope. And I can also know the rotation of it. Which way is it going and what is the speed of its rota rotation? I know there's not a spot specifically for these in your notes, but just on the margin or something, jot these couple things down. These are all different uses for star spectrum. Composition being the most common. Okay, so what does a spectrum look like? There are three kinds. These are the two that we'll look at the most within class. Um, continuous is when we see a totally unbroken band of color, right? A complete set of colors all the way down the line. Roy G. Biv, every single color showing. Um, we're all visible wavelengths are present. Okay, this is really common to see this looking at white light from the sun. That's when we're going to see it happening within our lab. Again, this one's called continuous because all colors are emitted and present in the spectrum. The second one here, the middle one, emission spectrum, only shows what is emitted or given off by that one specific light source. So I'm putting in that keyword here, specific wavelengths. Okay, again, this is like the fingerprint of that element. And typically it is have a black background there just like you see on your notes. I'm only getting wavelengths from the energy emitted from that light source. The final one here, the absorption spectrum, looks a lot like the emission except it's backwards. And this is what I occur or what occurs when I see it through a cooler gas layer. So actually when we look at stars through our atmosphere, this is what we tend to see because the atmosphere actually absorbs the energy 
being emitted and takes it away. So when I look at that absorption spectrum down here, it can also be called the dark line spectrum because it's the reverse of the emission. It's exactly the same thing, but now those lines are darkened by being absorbed from the atmosphere. So again, spectral lines are important. They show us the different wavelengths coming from the star or the light source. Most importantly, they're telling us composition, what that star is made of, but really gives us a lot of insight to what that star is like. Being here on Earth, I can investigate those very, very distant places.